Welcome out to another episode of It's All Been Trick Before. This time, how sharper than a serpent's tooth? That sounds sounds highbrow to me. Uh, you're going to see her just how highbrow it is. You saw it. You know it's not that highbrow. It's a Saturday morning cartoon. Speaking of, eh, I don't know if I'd say highbrow, but I wouldn't say lowbrow. It's one of our brand new features on the IABD Presents Network. Jim's Daily by Jerome Wetzel. Every day, network creator Jerome Wetzel wonders things, funny things, inspirational things, weird things. Most of them are crap, but every once in a while, say once a day, he thinks he has a thought someone else might appreciate. More often than not, he's wrong, but that hasn't stopped him from launching Jim's Daily by Jerome Wetzel. Get it on Facebook. Every day you'll get one post and one post only from Jerome. Like him, subscribe to see what he's thinking about next. I love it. I see it every day. You should see it every day. Speaking of things you could do every day, maybe not every day, but you could help every day. Maybe do it monthly. Donate. Patreon.com slash IBD and help us out. Donate enough and, 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 and maybe... Maybe uh, maybe they'll delete this page and stop making us read copy for it. All of her wearing, most of it much better than Jim's Daily by Jerome Wessel can be found at iabdpresents.com. Although, again, I love it. Uh, something else I love on this network. It's all been done. A Bare Naked Ladies podcast. Yeah, these guys are still going. Evan Sager, they're going through that Bare Naked Ladies catalog. If you haven't been going along with them, start at the beginning. Do it a song at a time. If you've been going that long, then you don't even need to listen to the rest of this, what I'm telling you. So, uh, you know, here are the theories on vampires, Fuller House and the Apocalypse as they yuck it up with guests like Justin McElroy, The Good Places, Eugene Cordero, and BNL biographer Paul Myers. That's It's All Been Done, a Bare Naked Ladies podcast here on IABDpresents.com. And now it's How Sharper Than a Serpent's Tooth on It's All Been Trucked Before. Welcome out to another episode of It's All Been Trucked Before. Your regular hosts are here. This is Steven. And Keith. And Jimmy Jerome. And we're here to talk about the classic episode of Star Trek The Animated Series, <laughs> How Sharper Than a Serpent's Tooth. <laughs> Did I give it its proper right. weight? Gravitas. Gravitas. Yes. It, it makes me want to try to maybe audition for Shakespeare at some point. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, we're jumping right in, but we, we should sorry. give our first impressions. Yeah. Not great. <laughs> Better than last week's? <laughs> And we're not ready to rank, but... Yeah. Uh, hmm. I thought it was a lot better than last week's. So yeah. No, I, I agree, certainly. Okay. I'm not, no, okay. okay yeah, I'm I, alone. I, I, was no, alone. I was wondering, I was like, wait a minute, I thought, yeah, I mean, based on that, I thought, I mean... It's, I, not, it's not a great, great episode, but compared to last week's, yes. I think it at least I, made sense. As soon as it's a higher being that has um, to run a test okay. is, and visited sure. Earth... I'm out. That is certainly fair. That is certainly fair. And this will fair. continue until we get to the end of the Orville. <laughs> <laughs> what about In Q? 27 years. I, I hate to bring uh, it to you, but the entire next generation I know. is Q testing humanity. I know. I didn't like him either, so we'll see how That's I like him. That's the premiere and the finale and everything I know. in between. What? And I didn't like him then either, and we'll see how <laughs> yeah. I like it you when we that? get there. Yeah, let's get into it. I was going to say that I... Uh, certainly, obviously, in the, in the vein of episodes of everything ever. No, not great, but... For animated series, I enjoyed it up to a, mm-hmm. up to a point, and you know that they were like g- gathering a lot of other things that were kind of eh, you know like the, it's another zoo episode as it turns out. Yeah, and I have that. Another note god too. thing. Another yeah. But, I, I agree. Some of the things were repetitive, but it was yeah. a cohesive story that made sense, and I liked <laughs> to me. Uh, yeah, no, no. Um, and I liked. The character of Kuku Khan, Kuk, whatever, <laughs> the Cuckoo, <laughs> the Cuckoo bird, because it to me it was a more complex character. I mean, he was the one acting like a petulant child while accusing mm-hmm. them of being petulant children, mm-hmm. and I thought there was an interesting dynamic there. Uh, I didn't think it was one of Doohan's best voices, although I thought it was better than his walking. Bear. Oh, he he was Kuku Khan. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was better than his walking bear. But um, so that was it. I said, yeah, they, my first comment oh, was yeah. Walking Bear sounds like Doohan. And yeah. he was like, well, yeah. yeah, he has a terrible voice, and I don't understand why he was there, <laughs> Jesus. especially just showing up suddenly. And then he gave them a little bit of plot information, but it wasn't necessary. Well, as you were saying, I mean, Sulu has all the hobbies, he could have had a Native American hobby right. this week. Yeah, well, you said last episode, though, this is or one of you, I think, said uh, it was written by a Native American, yes, or? yeah. So it probably put yeah. a Native American character. Yeah, in and but I say go for it. I mean, I'm all for a Native American character. Uh, com- the first officer in Voyager is Native American. Yeah, it's the fact that you throw in a character that we know nothing about and expect us right. to take him as right. part of the group. Right, right. No. and have him played by James Doohan. <laughs> and and yes, yeah. have James Doohan that, do, do a uh, Native American. If you had seated him in a few other episodes, it would have been fine. It's right. 
the suddenness sure. I don't like. Sure. And it's not like we got those characters in the original series where they'd come in for one episode, but mm-hmm. they developed them. Mm-hmm. This guy was only there to give you a couple of facts, and then they didn't develop him at all. But yeah, that is, that is kind of... Uh, Sulu could have yeah. the same thing with his hobby of the week. It wasn't mm-hmm. necessary. You uh, mentioned that last week, <laughs> last episode, and yeah, my first reaction was, uh... Yeah, that for a whole week? But, that was so long ago. Yeah, yeah it was a long <laughs> He held on to it. This, well, that's the, impressive. It was yeah, it was it was so significant to me at the time. Uh, yeah, this was written by Russell Bates and David mm-hmm. Wise, which one's Native American? I think Russell Bates is. Is he? Mm-hmm. Uh, Russell Bates has very few writing credits. He wrote an episode of the television series Isis, which I've never heard of. And he was yeah. an actor in Freddy of the Jungle and Porky's Two. David Wise has a lot more writing credits, mostly in Maybe he's stuff. the Native American. Maybe uh, I'm just making that up. I don't know. I mean, neither one of those names sounds Native American to me, but... No, you know, they do not. But maybe his mother was Native American, and I don't know. Or maybe he was like, Walking Bear is not a name I'm going to go by. I'm going to go by Wise. I, I have no idea. Russell Bates was a student of Gene Alcoon. There were influences of Gene Alcoon in this episode, apparently. Uh, I like the title. I think it was good to throw another Shakespeare in there. I mm-hmm. thought it was an uh, interesting melding of cultures, because at first they presented it like it was just going to be a Mayan. But I was seeing influences, like when they beamed down, that gate looked Chinese to me. Mm-hmm. And then they mentioned at the end that it was also the Chinese dragon, and that it was a conglomeration of different cultures. Okay. Which uh, I, 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 I missed that. that a little bit. My alternate title was, Who Mourns for Kuko, Fran, and Ali? <laughs> <laughs> Well, halfway through the episode, I thought it should be called wow. The Guy of the Beholder, but we already have that one, too. Mm. <laughs> That's not my alternate episode, but that is my alternate. I have two alternate, alternate episodes, time. actually. Oh, yeah. You want to go to them, or uh, do you want to wait? I'll wait for now. Okay. Until we at least in- introduce one aspect of one. The temple where they beamed down, I mm-hmm. thought that was weird, because they beam- they were like standing in a blank space. Mm-hmm. Then they were in a forest, and then they were where the temple is in a city. I don't understand why there was a forest in between. I, I, I was probably writing something at the time. It looked like a Dr. Seuss forest. Mm. And they were in it briefly. Mm. But then, because apparently they... It was all in their mind, but I didn't understand that at that point. So when the temple appeared out of nowhere, and then Kirk's like, let me go climb it. I was like, dude, dude, <laughs> that just appeared out of thin air. What if you get halfway up and it disappears again? I, I don't... That made me very nervous. Then, 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 then he would like stay suspended in midair for a bit and it's like go... Like feel the ground for a second, go uh oh, and then and then fall it. Looney yeah. Tunes yeah. style. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you hold up a little sign. <laughs> Yipe! <laughs> so I wasn't uh, crazy. Russell Bates is the native was a Native American. He passed away last year. Now he's nothing. Now he's nothing. <laughs> uh, from the God. Kiowa tribe. That is one of my favorite running jokes in this podcast. Is the nothing. <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> Uh, I was when you started to say he is was. I was like, oh, did he not? Did he like renounce his Native Americanness? <laughs> Uh, this After was, he saw this episode, he was like, I'm out. <laughs> this was actually supposed to be a subtle, subtle homage to Gene L. Kuhn for Who Mourns for Adonis. It was a similar thing. Except that yeah. Kuhn didn't conceive that. <laughs> he just heavily revised Who Mourns for Adonis. Uh, so when they beam down there, I don't know, it's just what happens when we only watch these, these things once, you know. Yeah. I'm like busy taking notes, not like processing what's happening. Sure. But I enjoy... Um, one of my favorite tropes, I guess, for many of these is when they have like puzzle mazes and things like that. Mm-hmm. And they're doing it wasn't, you know, that elaborate as it turns out, but it was something. Uh, just the whole thing of like trying to decode something and uh, aligning the the statues to reflect the sun and so forth, you know. I thought it was very way too simple a puzzle. Yeah. I mean once once it got it was like, okay, well I guess it's just that. But I appreciate the attempt, especially back then. And you notice that Bones could turn a head just as easily as Scotty yeah. and Bear together. Yeah. Yeah. Bones uh, is super strong. Yeah. Why is Scotty's already that too. lost his strength yeah. back to the movies? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was pressure points. I guess it's not the same, but maybe they ripped this off. It made me think of Raiders of the Lost Ark. When they had the oh, sun come yeah, through yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, show, yeah, yeah. show the map. Made that's me think where, that's where Raiders of the Lost Ark got it from. That occurred yeah. to me. <laughs> actually, actually, that same thought occurred to me. So I Just yeah. like, for, there's a force globe in this episode. Star Wars. Ah, uh, okay. So... Well, I, I, I noted, Star Wars. We'll get to that in a few weeks, folks. Turn back in. About the Force Globe thing, I noted that the first thing I would try to do, and this, I'm, I'm sure this is probably because I've seen some somebody do this before in some storyline, try to move of it slowly. If, it, mm-hmm. if it's based on inertia or, or some kind of pushback, it's like mm-hmm. you always just like kind right. of sneak out of it, like right. edge out yeah. of it, not like try to ram it. So, well, finally, Spock figured out the yeah. whole push 
to I didn't, I didn't do catch, them 5.89 yeah. light years away. Mm. But that, at least that was one of the things I would try to do. Is like, let's try to do it slowly then. You would think. But, yeah. But I'm not a science officer. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a doctor, not a science officer. <laughs> I, I, I noted, I hope to God I remember why the first conversation conversation with Kukulkan was so funny to me. Which God but, do you hope to? Quasicudo? Or Kukulkan? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right. I was just... Uh, it was something about the, this, the, the exchange between them. I can't remember the, the exact phrases now, but it was it was a lot, a lot like that, like uh, yeah. gone, completely gone now. <laughs> My Just alternate to... episode is while well, Kuzel Coddle, whatever his name is, is <laughs> I'm going to say it wrong every time, Kuzel. is like demanding their worship. Then the Christian God shows up and he's yeah. like, you shall have no other gods besides me. And they start arguing back and forth. Yeah. Back and then they're caught in between. Yeah. yeah, that's... Mm-hmm. Oh, Which would, and then they just kind of back out of the room slowly. Well, and that would create a problem going back to, I don't remember if it's Adonis or not, where Kirk's like, I think it is a who wants for Adonis. So I say, well, we got rid of all the gods just for one. It's like, uh oh, now what's he going to do if there's a Christian god and a Kuklakan? It's like, yeah. which one's he going to pick? I mean, obviously. He said there's only one. The Kuklakan got. The Kuklakan was more colorful, so, you know. You know, if, if it were up to me, I'd go, like, well, God is easier to say, so I'll go with him. That's <laughs> it. Just God. Okay, that's simple. Kuklakan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nope. Sorry. Can I just call you K? My notes actually just say K after a certain point. <laughs> like, I would never name my son human and demand everybody call him human. Why would I demand him call him right. human? one human. Right. Speaking of. Actually, not really, but. McCoy yells at the one. I don't. I can't remember if it's Walking Bear or somebody else. He's like, "You don't deserve it, but you're getting a few days bed rest." What kind of bedside <laughs> manner is this? What the hell is wrong with him? I mean, McCoy I forgot is that just, line. Yeah. I mean, he's taking a rass- being irascible to another level. Yeah. They well, mentioned the sun when they're solving the mystery. Oh, the sure. sun. Oh. Well. I guess it. Yeah, I guess well, it would be the sun. I guess. It, I guess it'd be the sun from where sun. they are. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. But I mean. I guess I'm looking at it from an Earth-centric point yes. of view that he's talking about our sun, but well, the, no, that, that's the whole point is that they say it in a way that they're probably thinking of it in, a, in an Earth-centric yeah, way, as yeah. opposed to that sun or a star, this sun or something, <laughs> Rigel or whatever they were. <laughs> Did we? What were they on a planet? Well, I mean, or was it an imaginary place? It was imaginary. Okay. They, they he said it was in his head. They were like, like in the cages. Well, that makes sense because they were going back to the seriously. The mines, I, I missed right? that. So it was yeah. like all being projected into the. Yeah, Kirk. Like, I think it was yeah, like yeah. virtual reality something or something. Like, yeah, yeah, so we were here the whole time. Just like all the animals in the cages were being projected a different environment. What? They didn't realize they were in the cage. Yeah. Oh, so that's what was happening. Yeah. With the, oh, oh my God, that makes so much more sense. I mean, you did but, uh, see the cage with Howard the Duck in the back, right? <laughs> Speaking that was which, a great bit. Yeah. When did McCoy become a zoologist? Because they kept asking him, well, McCoy, what about this? Like, he's a doctor, literally a doctor, not a zoologist. Another he's, a bi- reason, he's a biologist. Another Maybe reason that. Sulu should have been the opposite. Yes. Like, this hobby of the week. Yeah. Uh, McCoy oh. is a member of the Space SPCA. Of course. Mm. The one thing I really missed Sulu for in this episode, because Search Sky did not appear, was when Spock said, sensors indicate we are now being probed. I wanted him to say, uh, oh my. No. Oh my. Yes, that would have been so good. <laughs> that would have made that scene. I love the power cat of Capellan. And the, it reminded the, me of... The, the Pikachu cat. It reminded me of my cat, <laughs> Chloe, especially when they woke it up and it was like, what? What'd you do? Uh, and one of my two alternate episodes is just watching um, Capellan Power Kittens. Playing. <laughs> Just a bunch of Capel and Power Kittens rolling around, having fun. And my other one is uh, that instead of being the, the serpent with wings, mm-hmm. Kukla Khan is the is Cuckoo, Cocoa Puffs bird. <laughs> Sunny, I think. Is that? Oh is my that, God! Why do I remember that? that? Yeah, Sunny. Yeah, Sunny's right. name of the bird. He's Sunny. So, and it's just like you know, in Ghostbusters, when the Stay Puff Marshall man shows up, but the destructor for the Enterprise is, is Sunny. The now, see, I think Cocoa it would be really great. Why is his name Sunny? <laughs> about the zoo. Well, about uh, the zoo. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, at the, when it first showed up, I was like. At the same time, I was like, oh, another zoo. But I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting too. And then it just like stayed a little bit too long. Uh, I, when I, I, I like the creatures, and I was like, oh, there's another The creatures animation, there. it was yeah. excellent. Yeah. It yeah. was really excellent. Uh, so they, they had the sleepy cat that was electric. The, like, as, as soon as they unplugged the tube, like, the instant it woke up, just like, That's arr, just like if a cat's shock. sleeping against you, and you move one muscle, and it's like, I'm out! Well, they talked yeah. about how it, even as something as violent as that was in its happy, peaceful place. Right. And can you imagine something that vicious, <laughs> the happy, yeah. peaceful place gets ripped away from it? Right. Of course it's going to attack. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like they—they they, all that it was. So 
they've got a glass box of some sort. They have a transparent tube going into it. They pull the tube out, which presumably is like gas or something, that's or some, some sort of sedative. I didn't that's understand what I that assumed, either. But I thought he was saying yeah. it was mental powers because he used mental powers on uh, that. But I mean, as soon as I'm, like the instant someone plugs, like, wakes up immediately and it's like starts rampaging. But shit. were the creatures ever really there, or they were they made up too? No, they were, well, they were there. See, that's that's what was confusing me. But you said uh, that, like, I realized, okay, I thought they were there. there must be like a real area that they were in, right? Yeah. But the Aztec place wasn't. Or no, they I were still standing in the zoo the whole time. Oh, okay. So they were like plugged into something, and they no, unplugged. they weren't plugged in. They were just standing there, and he was using the mental powers. At least that's the way I read. Uh, it. Pretty okay. much the Matrix ripped off. Okay. Because that was the idea. Was like, <laughs> sure. They weren't really existing. They were part of the Matrix. Those exactly. Animals, yeah. So the pipes were part And they've of the... actually never left there. They're still on exactly. Kukla Khan's ship. Exactly. Exactly. The movies just happened in their mind. Exactly. So the pipes are for sedative, at least for the cat. But the, yeah, the other... I like, don't... I mean, like the, you know, the googly-eyed thing was like... Wide awake the entire so, time. No, that's just how its eyes move when it's sleeping. <laughs> that's it's what like, I was going to say. That's what I, um, oh, they've uh, never oh, established what the tubes were. We're yeah. just making no. assumptions yeah. here. And then, and then the uh, uh, God, I don't know. It was so funny to me. The the six armed creature or like yeah, like kept stroking his yeah, kept, kept, kept yeah, kept kind of like hmm, his, like stroking his, his neck yeah. like hmm. <laughs> I just like the three-eyed creature. The eyes were all looking different directions yeah. all the time. Yes, yeah. I mean the creatures in this episode were top notch. Yeah, they were. Yeah, it was good to see some aliens. Uh, as, as usual, par for the course. Honestly, I mean, it, it just they, like we can do anything we want. Let's draw these little things. They, they aren't necessarily like like world class animated, but they're d- good designs. And you know, yeah, they throw I, something in there. I think though, and this could uh, this may be a bullcrap theory that means nothing, but maybe they spent so much time. On um, the, the creatures, that that's why the beginning of the episode was so messed up. Mm-hmm. Because Yuhura was white in an overhead shot. <laughs> the mouths and the words were really off at the beginning of the yeah. episode. Oh, I didn't catch that. Oh, so bad. And mm-hmm. then the biggest thing that we paused to look yeah. at was the graffiti on the and ship. The it looked like oh, graffiti. Yeah, yeah. It was the NCC. So it's almost like, hey, we forgot to put the NCC in this frame. And somebody's like, give me a Sharpie. We don't have time to yeah. do anything else. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so so no. Uh, that's where I'm like, maybe they had to rush that other stuff because. Because they spent all their time on these. Really well, they used the sharpie and it first looked great, and then somebody wiped their hand across it. Like, oh, I smudged it. We don't <laughs> have time. time. Let go it go. With it. Yeah. We gotta get to that last episode. <laughs> uh, speaking of the overhead shot, I noted that they actually had a, a different shot. Where, when the crew actually moved for the ship shaking. They mm. all like kind of, kind of mm. like cringed together, yeah. like from the overhead. So they altered the stock footage a little bit. I wrote uh, Walking Bear here, but I keep thinking I wrote Whiskey Bear. That's a, <laughs> that's a better name. Comedy. That's, that's, that's a, a comedy s- thing. So much better. And also it makes me think of, uh, this is a long time ago, a girl I worked with. There was another guy I worked with, and he was trying to put the moves on her. And <laughs> he said he was part Native American, and he might have been. And so from that point forward, she and I just called him Little Bear. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A great book series for children. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> this is... This is almost like a uh, like a like a fan written episode in the sense that you had all the people like uh, all their eyes widening when they saw something like a lot of good reactions. Oh, yeah, like uh-huh. Spock's eyes widened. Like uh-huh. suddenly he's so surprised by this yeah. thing. Everybody's like, "Oh!" We had yes. some reaction shots last week too. Yeah. I forgot to mention, but yeah, I'm, I'm digging the reaction shots late in the series. Yeah. They finally got them down. Fashion. Mm. Fashion. Was there any fashion? I guess the quasicodal design. I was about to say that yeah. it's like he was wearing not quasicodal, but you know, wings and feather boas or something. Kukukachu. And, and also, uh, <laughs> whether, whether, whether or not, whether or not, whether or not, uh, whether it's fashion related per se, but he was certainly working it the entire time, just wiggling. His wings his, were flapping, and his, his, his tail was yeah, w- wagging the whole oh, time. Yeah. Like, ooh. Yes. We were talking about how. I could be accused of ripping off a bunch of animated series stuff for Universe Journey, but the fact that Chatner couldn't say cool cop, yeah. yeah. whatever, I think, correctly, I, I think it's, it's cool. very cocky. Yeah. yeah. Yes, very. So, but, yeah. Yeah. I thought, are we misremembering the, the bah theme? Because it was like, bah, bah. Because they were saying like, bah, bah. bah. But no, there's not, it's well, not a double bah. There's a little like, music in the middle. Yeah. yeah. But no, it's like, bah, bah. Then they go, Bam, 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 bam. But it's like, I'm not hearing the double bam anymore. They alternated it. They I don't know what's going it's on. another piece of that piece. Like, so it's not, probably a five-minute piece. They're just taking parts out of it. Yeah, so now I'm going to go back and like listen to the earlier episodes. Like, remember, I haven't done this yet, but I want to no, go... No, it's there. I want to go and find if there's just a collection of all the music from the animated there series. There is. I'm sure there is. You would think. And then you can look up Tarzan Hour on CBS, and I, a lot of it's the same music. 
I've got, I've got two things left, actually. I've got three. Hmm. I've got four. I guess, uh, oh, Although one of them I can't really read. Uh, I like when Kurt tells Spock, or no, McCoy and Scotty essentially to shut up and let him do the talking. <laughs> what? No, I don't remember. Uh, There's a spot where Kirk's like, Bones, Scotty, be quiet. Oh, and then he goes right, back yes. to he goes back to asking the questions. Like, <laughs> essentially, he's like, "Let me do the talking. So, Shut it." Okay, so I think we theorized that last week. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible that that, that uh, Shatner actually started influencing the, the animated episodes? So. I really don't I mean, think so. Because there's there was no indication of that ever. Like up up until like uh, that I last know. episode where. Would it have even been pop? He's he yeah. probably just shows, shows up and does his lines in the booth and goes, "All right, yeah. gone." You know. So, um, sorry, I'm going backwards for sure, a second. That's okay. But there is from La La Land Records. There was a Star Trek 50th anniversary four disc collection, and one of them has 43 tracks from the animated series oh for my the God. first time. Most of them are like a minute or less, so I'm guessing it's like 15 minutes total. Is, but is that is that is like uh, this is an official release? Okay, wow. Okay. Um, and then they're saying this is the first time the animated series has been released, but it's not available by itself. It's part of a larger collection, oh, of course, with stuff from films and the original series. All right. And this is the Star Trek 50th Anniversary Collection Musical Rarities from across the Star Trek universe. It's 49.98 for CD set. Temporarily out of stock. I bet. They sold all Limited six to copies. Limited to 3,000 units. I mean, Star Trek is renowned for its beautiful music. I just feel like the animated series is a dark part of that. Like, the, yeah. the you're, yeah, you're right. Ship of it. You're right. I mean, the even like DS9 Voyager and stuff, the yeah. odds, they were like, this is one of the last, last television series still using an orchestra. Oh, wow. Now, the Orville uses an orchestra. Yeah. It seems, uh, they brought it back. It seems like uh, Seth Farland, like like Family Guy, especially. It seems yeah. like there's something orchestra or something. I think about they that. use it, but definitely yeah. for uh, the Orville, they use an orchestra. <laughs> you heard uh, for a second. I thought she wasn't going to talk in this episode because like Kirk gave her a bunch of orders, and she didn't even say "I sir." She just kind of turned, <laughs> and then she had this like weird gasp during the dangerous part on the starship. And then she did have a few lines, but I was like, wait, that's her gasp. I guess she will have lines here eventually. That was one of my notes. I thought you were going to say the same thing I was going to say here, but uh, apparently there, there was something where her was uh, like asking some questions about what was going on, and Spock essentially just like, like shut up and do your job. Yeah. Not in those yeah. words. Yeah. They're kind of like, that too. and they, like, they cut to her for a second, and she was like, oh, and yeah. look at her face like, she oh. She gave him sass. Like, and then it was like, nope. She just turns and like, yeah. all right, That's I'm awesome the animators gave her the sass. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I did think the walking bear was really playing with the crew when Kirk's like, what is that? Walking bear's like, I recognize it. Then he stops and there's nothing. <laughs> and then they get fired on and then he says what it is. And I'm like, okay, dude, there, no dramatic pause in this moment. What? No, I, I didn't I recognize that. it. Pew, pew. <laughs> and? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was just weird. Oh, and also, dude. Kirk stopped talking before Walking Bear disappeared off the bridge. Like, he was talking to him. Stuff oh, yeah, sentence. yeah. It was before anything happened. Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe he felt the electricity in the uh, air. I don't know. Uh, so we saw something related to KukulCon. Was it? Yeah, when they first saw it on the view screen, yeah. nobody knew what it was. And was, he it was, the, like, was it the snake or something else? No, the ship. And then it turned into oh the snake. oh okay yeah, the, yeah, oh weird. right and the yes yeah. right the like the hologram effect over it or something yeah yeah sorry go on. this goes kind of back to Kirk telling everyone to shut up and let him do talking <laughs> at some point McCoy's like Jim do something. What's he? Why aren't you doing something? <laughs> He's a doctor, not a problem solver. I just, it just doesn't make any sense. He's a. I'm a doctor, not a doer. Why is he insisting that Kurt, anybody <laughs> there something. can do this? My last note was essentially that it was. Uh, this is probably going to go into the ranking. On, honestly, it's just minus two. So this is. It, it just said it was. <laughs> it was very visually interesting in certain places before I started getting bored of like whatever they were doing. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for me to say if that makes it better than anything else. It, you know, it, was, it got me. Insert. I was like, "Huh, that's it. Oh, that's new. That's interesting." Oh. I and thought then, this godlike thing was better than some of the original series episodes where they encountered a godlike being. I, I can't argue. I think I mean, maybe those episodes generally feel bloated to me. So condensing mm. into twenty minutes worked for me. That's fair. Hmm. Um, I don't remember who said this, but I thought this summed up the episode for me when they said, "This is useless." <laughs> Well, I think we're going to have some disagreements in the ranking. I know, that. I'm in the minority. But first, but first, let's rank our women and men. Uh, Steven, are you sticking with Randy Bryce? Yeah. Keith, Apparently. are you sticking with the cloud creature you haven't seen? Uh, presumably, yes. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> well, fine for you people. I'm going with the Capella Power Cat. 
Oh, oh. that's a good choice. I'm still gonna stick with Randy Bryce, but I know you're a cat guy too. I am, to be but that's a good one. But I'm gonna, yeah, I'm I'm still gonna stick with Randy Bryce since I did. I'm trying to imagine right now what Keith envisions this cloudy creature hasn't seen since he loves cloud. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's uh, probably the sexiest cloud creature you can imagine. I mean, obviously, it would have to be. <laughs> um, okay, let's rank the episode. <laughs> I know I'm going to be on the outside. On this Normally, place. you tell me I'm great at picking a place to start. I know. I'm but this one I know. Where I'm, I should start I right know. now. I don't know. Would you say it's in the eye of the beholder? Oh. Let's start there. Let's start there. <laughs> wow. Better or worse than the eye isn't of the that, beholder? Isn't that sort of the bottom? That was the. No, uh, that's not at the bottom. Um, that's the squid, el- elephant squid. No, what did, what did, what did you call it? Elephant snails? <laughs> why, why can't I remember? Any, just, no, these are all gone in my zoo. head. Like the, they were in the zoo. Oh, yeah. okay. And okay. Uh, the baby. The, the ba- I think I called okay. them elephant snails. That's what it was, yeah. I'm honestly okay either way we go on this episode. I the Beholder was a better zoo episode, per se. I mean, if, but if which, you're... I guess what comes down to me is which one seems to have more original creative thinking. And I the Beholder probably does edge it out. <sighs> I mean, I know how I... <laughs> <laughs> Steven thinks Eye of the Beholder is better. <laughs> this I, is my yeah God I, testing bias, but yeah. I think I think Eye of the Beholder probably is yeah. better as well. Now that I think about it. Next one now is the Terraton incident, which is Honey, I Shrunk the Crew. Yeah. Oh man. I liked this better. I'll just say it. But if you guys vote to go under, I'll go mm. under. Hmm. <laughs> shrinking, shrinking is a trope, but it was interesting. And but this was it a trope in the seventies. Oh, man. And that was certainly an episode they couldn't have done in the live action, so they were taking advantage of right. being animated. This made, I, I guess, consistently a little bit more sense than probably a lot of the other things like that. So, especially the, the Territ and whatever is just more like, well, you know. I still think it's better than some we'll get to. I think your point about it being cohesive makes some sense. And there were some I mean, great... we didn't understand what the pipes and things were. There were, were some great but... creatures. Yeah. yeah, we don't know how the... But that's okay. I just assumed there was a way it worked, and we just weren't informed because it wasn't important to the story. You know, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna bump it up because just thinking about the concepts that they're putting forth that early, as mm-hmm. far as like a VR matrix kind of thing that they're doing with the animals, and that's a, it requires a type of thought process that I think would, probably wouldn't have been as common back then. So, so you're saying above Terraton, yeah. below Eye of the Beholder? Yeah. That puts it number seven. <coughs> serious. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I know. I the older six. That's where we started. Wow. Sorry, wow. Steven. This has been a rough. This is this has been rougher than we thought. How, how curious though? I'm curious. Where would you rank this? How here? curious is Serpent Serpent's Tooth? Uh, <laughs> let's let's go with uh, okay. Albatross. Better or worse than last week's episode? I probably <laughs> I probably liked it less than that. Ooh, I'm trusted number 17. Uh, now, now that we're back from listening to OK. Is Magic of Magastu next? No, that's above Albatross. Oh, wow. We really hated that. <laughs> um, one of our planets is missing. Do you remember that? Yeah. You know what? I would. Uh, that's, you put it there? Yeah. So you'd rank it number 18. Yeah. <laughs> Keith and I made it number 7 <laughs> out of 21. 18. It, it's like, Just, is that a big difference or isn't it? It's hard to. I don't know. With, it's a pretty big difference. Yeah. I hated it. It's number 7. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you'll get your chance to argue in two weeks or one week that's for us right. when we do the complete series wrap-up that's and we'll right. talk about if we that's, think we ranked true. it well or if we should reorder. Um, Loved it, number episode. six. But before we get to that, <laughs> next week we'll be talking the counterclock incident, the series finale. Hey. The Enterprise is transporting its first captain, the captain before Pike, Robert April, to Babel. If you look up Captain Robert April in the Star Trek Encyclopedia has a picture of Gene Roddenberry in uniform. Huh. Um, I'm going to call it right now. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to work in counterclockwise somehow. So, <laughs> as he's tra- as they're transporting, where he's reluctantly being uh, accepting his retirement, the Enterprise attempts to stop an unidentified vessel on a collision course with a Nova, and the ship accidentally passes into an altered dimension where time flows in the opposite direction. The crew of the Enterprise, so it is counterclockwise. Oh my the God. crew of the Enterprise rapidly begins to grow younger in age and soon become unable to manage. Oh. And the picture, oh. the picture is Spock, <laughs> Kirk, Uhura, and Sulu as like toddlers. I'm oh, still in uniform. No. Yeah, still in uniform. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's how we end the series. Oh, I just, God. And, I, and then I just realized I just watched a Family Guy episode where that happens, which was definitely an homage. I, love, I, I, I keep discovering all these Seth MacFarlane homages. I could be wrong, but I seem to think the Counterclock incident is regarded pretty well. Really? 
Oh, wait wrong. and see. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'd be like Muppet Babies or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting that Majel is Which credited was... only in that as well, that she wasn't in the last yeah. few episodes of the series. Yeah. We get everybody else next week, though. We'll get Jimmy Dewey, right. Michelle Nichols, George Takai will be back, DeForest Kelly, Leonard Nimoy, William Shatner. No guests. We will get... I do see Eric's is credited in the last episode, okay. so maybe we'll get Toddler Eric's Maybe as Eric's, well. yeah. Although Mares is not. Uh, Michelle does play three different voices, but Mares is not one of them. I feel like we got... Oh, Michelle does Mares. I should, I'll save this for, I should save it for the wrap-up, but I feel like we got cheated on Mares. We didn't get a lot of her. We uh, literally yeah. learned oh, nothing certainly. about her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about Eric's and Mares <laughs> a lot in the wrap-up, I think. Sorry, we learned nothing about her. <laughs> No, Until it, next week. <laughs> Live long and prosper. <laughs> it's all been done presents. Who's got the time?